the entire science of physiology is based on a very interesting concept. Okay, I'll first give you the name and then try to understand what the concept really is. I'm sure you have heard of it. Nothing very mysterious about it. How many of you have heard the word homeostasis? Everybody? Very good. Very good. That's very good. That makes sense. Okay. So let us, we are going to visit the concept once again. Okay. Let's try to understand because every question in physiology can be more or less asked in terms of uh, what does it mean to homeostasis. Okay. And that helps you to understand. So let's, let's talk about what is, what is homeostasis. Okay. Now, uh, instead of going into the, into the, instead of going into the definition of homeostasis, we let us directly dive into an example and try to understand what homeostasis really is. Okay, I'm going to do a very simple experiment. I'm going to take a pin and then I'm going to prick your finger. Not a great idea. Okay, and then you bleed a little in your finger and then I'm going to collect that sample on a, a tiny instrument that I have called, which I, which I call as glucometer. Okay, and then when I take it there and then I try to evaluate and then it tells me what is your blood sugar level. And surprisingly, if you have, all of you have had your breakfast about one and a half hour back and if you're all here, most likely I'll find that your blood sugar level is about 90 milligrams per 100 ml, 95, 100, 105, that, that's all the range in which most of you will be. Okay, so you ask yourself a question, why is it that so many people, so many genes, so many different, in spite of these variations, how is it that all of you have more or less your blood glucose level in a very narrow range? But can it go down? Of course it is, it can go down. How, how, how far can it go down? Well, it can go from 90 to 80 milligram per 100 ml, I remember 100 ml of blood, we are measuring your you find that if it goes below 80 milligrams per 100 ml, okay, uh, you may still be okay, but if it goes to 75, you may faint. Okay, and then and then if you go below, then we have a very typical condition the doctor call as hypoglycemic coma. So it's so dangerous, okay, it's very dangerous. It, you cannot you cannot allow the blood glucose level to go lower than that. The uh, at the other end, I mean, you have had a, a carbohydrate rich area, sugar we I like, you all like, we see we have should we have too much of that, then we find that the blood sugar level may go up. How far may it may go up? Well, it may go as far as uh, 120, 130 milligrams per hundred ml. Okay, but after that it goes, then it's also not a great idea because uh, uh, because a higher level of glucose for a person time, you all know diabetes. Okay, it can it can give rise to damaging heart, damaging kidney, damaging brain. So there are lots of lots of so it's very necessary for our biological system to maintain the blood glucose level within a narrow limit. What is the limit? What did I tell you? Lower side you can go as far as 80, higher side we can go as one as far as 120 or so. That lower limit is absolutely important because your brain needs continuous and steady supply of glucose through the blood. You know something, your brain continuously needs two things, you know, steady supply and for that steady supply, you need a steady gradient, okay, and that and the two most important things are number one is oxygen and number two is glucose, okay, and these two things have to be in a blood, always in a sufficient concentration so that it flows from the blood into the cells, particularly that of the brain. If it falls down, the, blade, the, the brain neurons use only, only, only glucose as a source of energy and if you reduce the gradient, the, the brain cells will simply stop their functioning, you go in coma. It's very important. So you need to, okay. Which also means that, see it's, see if you, so this is so far okay, it's okay. You need, you need blood glucose level, it has to be there. But for monitoring or for making sure that I always have in my blood glucose, which is narrow within the narrow limits of 80, 120. I can go, I can go in this range, but not beyond that range. It also means that I need to have in my body, a sensor which will keep on monitoring the amount of glucose that is present. Okay, there has to be sensor. Are you getting the argument? Without, I mean, otherwise, how, otherwise, how would the body know that? Okay, okay, you are going below eighty. How does the body has to have a sensor? Similarly, if you if you have too much of, and then if it goes too much, if you have too much of sugar, or if I just inject, okay, uh, 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 fifty grams of glucose in your system, the blood glucose uh, level will start rising, and then it will go beyond one twenty, and that's not good for you. But for determining that, you need a sensor. Okay, so 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 the point that I want to make is for n number of substances, you need. I'll talk more about the sensors in due course of time. So let's see what homeostasis is. <coughs> you see, for the we know that every cell every cell is continuously engaged in performing n number of series of biochemical reactions. Be it be it enzymatically, be it whatever it is. Okay, there. And it is also necessary that for the cell to perform those reactions, 
mitochondria to do their role endoplasmic reticulum golgi whatever they need certain certain assurance of guaranteed circum environment what am i talking about environment of a cell what am i talking about environment of cell and it is a condition obviously the cell cannot function uh, your brain cell is functioning optimally because your body temperature assures that your body temperature is 97.6 degrees fahrenheit okay are you done any difference of opinion there no it has to be it has to be the temperature has to be how much 97.6 fahrenheit okay okay can brain tolerate that tolerate what tolerate any disturbance in that no it can't it can't if it goes 100 102 you are you are already in bad shape you are febrile your brain is not functioning if it goes to 105 you are quite dead okay similarly if the brain temperature goes from 97 to about 95 94 finish you your brain says just refuse to function so what is the message here it's very necessary that for every your neuron to function optimally you have to provide your brain with this with the with the temperature of about 97 point absolutely basic condition for life now i'll move on and i'll ask you well you just know we talked about glucose so look at this table look at the bottom line the bottom line is extremely familiar what are we talking about uh, glucose 70 to 100 according to this table that's fine uh, that is the normal range in we get but is it only the glucose that is no 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 look at sodium in the blood what about sodium in the blood 135 to 155 milliequivalents per liter you just cannot allow the sodium either to fall okay if it falls you will get faint okay a very serious uh, uh, look at the potassium uh, it's very low but it is between very narrow limit 3 to 5.5 chloride 95 to 100 bicarbonate total plasma albumin you you, you look at these range of, so um, it's not only the story of glucose uh, almost each and every parameter of your brain in your blood has to be within a narrow narrow limit and that goes beyond you see this is a very interesting how many of you i'm absolutely sure but still how many of you have heard of uh, this is children we learnt it you know the uh, migration of salmon everybody good 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 so we know that this uh, fish is a fish okay the fish salmon okay uh, it is born uh, after the after the union of the male and female somewhere in the northern part of canada or north america in some tiny stream and there the eggs will hatch and then the young one will come out and it is in the river water where the where the salt on uh, it's a fresh water so salt concentration extremely low it will grow there for about 6 months then it will flow down flow down along with the water current and finally 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 it will enter into the sea once it enters into the sea if you i want you to compare the chloride ion concentration the fresh water and the sea water and the sea water is 100 times more 100 times more i just want you to appreciate the two different worlds the fresh water and the sea water and the difference between at least 100 100 times okay and as a result of that what would happen to the chloride ion concentration in the blood of the animal well it is it is in the it's in the water okay so it's it's, it's very likely that chloride ion concentration will go but if it goes the fish will die okay because 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 in the life the brain cells of the fish have to be assured that the chloride ion concentration in its environment which means what the fluid around the brain cell has to be in the narrow remit so in spite of the massive change outside the fish is still capable of maintaining maintaining the the chloride okay i'll, I'll take this slide here okay this is the slide i missed okay so here we have the salmon and the salmon is in uh, as, as as it goes from fresh water to sea water uh, but if you keep on so so what do you do what have we done here you keep on collecting the fish from the fresh water take 1 ml of blood uh, try to find out what is the concentration of chloride ion let the fish go to uh, let the fish go to sea water again take the same amount of blood and what do you find chloride ion concentration look at that horizontal line it's almost same which means what the animal is able to do what the animal is able to in spite of the massive change 100 time 100 fold change across the animal is still able to maintain the Uh, we can't really start any lecture in physiology without reference to this uh, brilliant professor from france his name is claude bernard okay uh, in about uh, what was the time you see is 1813 to 98 so one of the one of the most brilliant as you go ahead in biology now i am not talking physiology i am talking general biology as you go ahead you will find that so as not to bias your results 
okay you see whenever you are doing an experiment in my heart there is a suppressed desire that i want my results to work out in a particular direction am i right there yes or no okay and to and 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 that may bias my that that may bias my results that may bias my data so what do i do it what you what does your professor do it he makes you blind do you understand what i mean by blind he gives he gives you two samples and one sample is control one sample is experimental and you don't really know what is experimental what is control so you just do it and whatever is the data you show to professor and professor tells okay if it's still meaningful it is meaningful are you getting it he was the first man who said that in biological sciences for doing an experiment one thing that is very necessary to do the experiment in a blind manner are you getting my argument the importance of what doing an experiment not knowing what you are doing so that your likes and dislikes okay your perceptions are not only enforced on your data okay so that was uh, that was just uh, incidental point about clot burner great biologist he said that for the efficient functioning of any system biological system it's very necessary that the environment of a cell is kept constant he in french he called it as milieu interior milieu is environment internal environment okay so your internal environment has to be constant if you want your cells to function optimally what well, this was the first and then this another professor of harvard after about 50 years or so his name is uh, his name is walter cannon he 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 came up with a wonderful word which we call as uh, homeostasis what is the word what are we doing now trying to okay so what is it a physiological systems functions to maintain or regulate the condition of the internal environment within relatively narrow limits so this is this was a beautiful concept in in enunciated by uh, walt okay we have done this let's move ahead 